A planet called Theia, covered in seas and rivers, full of exotic gardens and wondrous creatures, flies out of its orbit. Dun da da dum! And travels in the direction of our solar system. Dum 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 dum! Kidding everything in its path, Theia makes Venus rotate in the other direction, breaks off a piece of the Earth, and apparently, by the law of bartender's tricks, shares some water with it, splashing a little on the Martians. Then it grabs at Jupiter so that it starts spinning faster. This causes Theia to crumble into small pieces so that fragments reach Saturn and form its rings together with cosmic dust. The remnants become moons of Uranus, and after this game of cosmic billiards, the universe makes every effort to stop us knowing about Theia. After all, it just wants to forget about it like a bad dream. Dum da da dum, dum 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 dum. No, this isn't a new Marvel movie plot. It's quite possible that this is what the hypothesis for the creation of the solar system will look like from the point of view of scientists who love Greek mythology just as much as they love getting research money from investors. Now, they're closing off any gaps when it comes to so-called Theia. In March 2021, scientists announced that they had found fragments of the alien world in the Earth's mantle. In this video, we'll go through their logic in detail and annihilate every unfounded theory. But most importantly, we'll find out for sure. So, where is the evidence for Thea's existence? The moon is our eternal companion, but how did it come about? And who's responsible for our tides, for howling wolves, and for sudden headaches and irritability? The scientists believe we owe that to Theia. The logic of the scientists looks like this. Since the moon exists, then there's Theia, which could have chipped and knocked the moon off the Earth with a strong blow. David Scott and James Irwin went to the moon to collect samples, and they hit the jackpot. On the 1st of August, 1971, the Apollo 15 astronauts found the Genesis Stone. When it was examined, it turned out that the oxygen isotopes of the Earth and the Moon were almost as identical as Logan Marshall Green and Tom Hardy. This could just confirm the hypothesis about Theia. It's believed that the moment Theia hit the Earth, about a hundred million times more energy was released than when the dinosaurs became extinct. Some of the outer layers of the Earth evaporated, and both celestial bodies melted, and part of the mantle was thrown into orbit around the Earth. This hypothesis explains why the Moon has an unusual composition and has no metallic materials. The ejected material condensed into a single body, and under the influence of its own gravity, took a spherical shape. And now DreamWorks has a unique opening screen. You're probably saying, every schoolchild knows about the meteorite that fell on us, luckily ensuring that we don't have T-Rexes roaming our streets now. But why is it that no one has any idea about Thea's fascinating story? Because the evidence for its existence has been refuted. When the stones from the moon were checked over time using improved methods of analysis, it turned out that the isotopic composition of the deeper rocks of the moon was not similar to that of the Earth. And Theia returned to the club of fictional characters again, to Ultron and Vision. Sorry for the spoiler, in case you haven't watched it yet. And now to the actual logical answer. The moon was formed of debris, cosmic debris. The Earth and the moon formed nearby and together from the same dust ball. Therefore, the identity of the oxygen isotope ratio is easily explained. This theory is considered the closest to reality, just debris and no Theia. Would you like to find out more about how the logic of scientists works? First, let's figure out how water appeared on Earth according to their version. No need to thank me, Theia would reply to you. The Earth is unique. 
It's the only rocky planet with a lot of water, but it was created in the dry inner part of the solar system. How is it even possible then? Scientists' logic. Water was transferred to the Earth during a collision with Theia, and probably there was water on it originally. A logical counter-question. So, if it really was like that, there was life on Theia. Am I really the only one whose hair stands on end in response to this fact? After all, I understand that creatures on some planet died due to a collision with ours. What did these inhabitants of Theia look like? What was their level of development? What was their last day like? Well, it didn't, because here's the really logical answer. Water on Earth appeared as a result of debris. To be more precise, some very cool cosmic debris. Among the particles from which the Earth was created, there were originally rocks that were prone to forming water. Later, water could have appeared from volcanoes. During their eruption, water vapor in the atmosphere could have condensed and rained down, slowly filling the Earth with water. Just debris and no Theia. Still, the scientists would not give up and keep trying to find Theia no matter what it takes. A lot of money is needed for science projects, and the cooler your research story, the more you'll get. Therefore, it seems that sometimes scientists have to come up with a whole PR move for their project. For example, Theia is a Greek titaness. Astronomers are poor scriptwriters, but they understood the principle of the Marvel industry. The more mythology, mysticism, and action, the more their story will be liked by the audience and, accordingly, sponsors. For example, a mission with NASA's Stereo Probes, launched in 2006, was given US $550 million, and they didn't find anything. And still, we don't know where Theia came from or where it disappeared to. Scientists' logic. Since we cannot find it, it means that it's at the Lagrange point. Lagrange points are areas of space where the gravitational pull of the Sun and Earth combines to form a gravity well. At the bottom of such a well, various items of cosmic debris are collected. Finding Theia there is like a desperate attempt to move the couch to find the TV remote. After all, the sofa is not even the Lagrange point. It's the black hole of your house. But apart from the clouds of dust, there's nothing there. Just as there are no remains of Theia at the Lagrange point. Even if this is true, logic would suggest that Theia was also created from debris that accumulated at the gravitational equilibrium point. But I think scientists would prefer to believe that the mysterious origin and spontaneous disappearance of Theia was the work of Thanos rather than put up with the idea that everything was created by debris. Was there no Theia at all? After many failed attempts to find Theia, scientists were in such a hopeless state that they came to what they viewed as a logical conclusion. Earth is a star. What? There's no way you expected to hear this. Scientists believe that at the time, the Earth was in a white dwarf state. Therefore, when Theia hit it and knocked it out of orbit, the Earth became a satellite of the Sun and acquired the status of a planet. And most importantly, Theia melted into the Earth, so we can never find it. Incredible! It would be incredible if there was at least some evidence for this. But a doctor of philosophy, geodynamics student at Arizona State University, Qian Yuan, found them. While the others were flying to the moon, sending out probes, Qian Yuan was the first to think of looking under his feet. The student recalls how he was struck by this information in planetary geochemistry class. He thought that after the impact, Theia could have gone underground and formed large areas with a low shear rate. Using seismic imaging technology, scientists have traced magma plumes. Deep in the bowels of the Earth, its core is surrounded by a pair of mysterious structures in the form of huge bubbles. One is under the African continent and the other is under the Pacific Ocean. In its shape, this anomaly resembles giant headphones. Research suggests that Theia's mantle contained more iron oxide than Earth. This means that it was denser. So when the two planets collided, 
Thea's mantle sank and was preserved within the Earth's mantle. Qian Yuan demonstrated his arguments with an illustration of a beer bottle. I definitely like this kind of astronomy. Qian Yuan himself is glad that his work has become famous, but asks that we should not forget that this is just a hypothesis. The research is based on the observation of mantle waves. They're found as a result of reflections from various materials, just as a doctor uses x-rays to look inside your body. Yet, unlike the doctor, we cannot cut open the Earth to see if this interpretation is correct. Our technology is not yet perfect enough to study such complex cosmic phenomena. The same was true in the search for exoplanets, which astronomers could have confused with ordinary dust and debris. In case you haven't seen my video about this yet, I advise you to watch it in order to realize the full scale of inaccuracies in space exploration in our time. It's a shame that scientists have to come up with fantastic stories to get funding. Because of this, as in the case of Thea, the line between science and mythology is blurred. But I'm all for truth in science. Therefore, I decided to create a presentation of a really logical version of these space events, which would be true and at the same time would still appeal to both investors and even the director of NASA. After the Big Bang, cosmic debris flew around the world for a very long time. Dum 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 dum. It has been floating around for a very long time. And nothing happened. Dum 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 dum. But then suddenly, under the influence of gravity, the debris began to thicken and rotate. From those clouds of debris, planets were formed. Then the debris created water on the Earth, the Moon, dinosaurs, volcanoes, chariots, capitalism, otters, DreamWorks, and Logan Marshall Green. Oh, sorry, that is Tom Hardy. You, your mother, Qian Yuan, investors, and even the Riddle Channel. Da da dum dum. You see, even the most unremarkable things can become epic, and you don't need to deceive anyone. And now, you too can try to make some scientific fact interesting using my technique. Leave your versions in the comments below this video and on your social media accounts. And don't forget to use the dum 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 facts hashtag.